guys, I'm Daryl. Welcome to the channel. This week, Jeep and specifically tyres. Uh, for those that are regulars to the channel will know, uh, last year I put out a video, and I'll link to it up here, where I changed from a Berth Goodrich KM3 to a Maxxis Razor MT. It was with great trepidation because those that watch the channel regularly will know that I'm quite open about the fact that I'm a bit of a Berf Goodrich mud terrain fanboy and I've had the originals, the KM2s, the KM3s in all different sizes um, and they just do what they say on the box. You, you can you can rely on the fact that if you buy mud terrain um, they will be quite a good dual purpose tyre, um, maybe you know, in, in the wet, they're a little bit more skitterish than the all-terrains. Um, that's how I find them anyway. Um, but I have tried different brands over the years and to move from something that I know to something that I don't know um, was a bit of a leap of faith. Um, but today, uh, <laughs> this is really slack of me, um, I've been doing so much other stuff with landscaping houses and everything that I haven't actually rotated the tyres and we're about 14,000 k's in now. I'm seeing a bit of wear on the fronts and I know with this vehicle, because I've had it so long, that if I don't rotate the tyres at all, I'll go through two sets of fronts to one set of rears. Um, that's just how it works. But I'd like to get a little bit more out of it than that. Um, something to note though, I was driving along the other day in the traffic coming home from the office and I heard what sounded like a vehicle next door to me with a set of worn out mud terrains on. It was really, really loud. Um, and we all know that noise. And when it pulled up next to me, it was really interesting. It was a dual cab Ford Ute, a medium sized dual cab Ford Ute, um, but it had a set of Mickey Thompson all terrains on it. And they looked fairly new, but this thing was making so much noise going along, like it was the thump, 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 that we all know that worn out mud terrains make. And that was a really interesting thing to see in the traffic because you could actually see what tyre it was, how new they were, and they did look very, very new. Um, but yeah, they were woeful. This thing, this thing is quite as compared to that. Um, so don't just buy all terrains thinking that they're going to be uh, quiet. But anyway, Let's start rotating these tyres today, um, let's have a look at them and let's just go over what I think the differences are between these and the KM3s and there's not a lot. So we've got the left hand rear off and the right hand front and these two are the ones that we're going to swap over and then we're going to do the other two. Um, the reason we're doing that, uh, these are a non-directional tyre and I find with mud terrains that you need to rotate them diagonally. Um, there's definitely more wear on the front to the back um, and if we measure the tread depth we've got about 12 mils on the back left and about 10 on the front. Um, so we're about two mil down on the front and they probably would have worn, I, I'd say if I would have rotated them every 5,000 Ks, we'd be looking at a fairly constant um, tread depth, but hey, I didn't, so I'm gonna pay the price. Um, when I'm rotating them, why don't I bring the spare into action? I never do it. I just never rotate the spare into action. Um, I find the spares on these things, I can count on, uh, over 20 years of driving this type of vehicle, I can't count on one hand how many times I've actually had to use a spare. I carry a plug kit and I carry a compressor and I find that's good enough. Um, and, and I just think if you're bringing the spare into action, yes, you're going to put off uh, buying tyres, but at the end of the day you're going to have to buy five instead of four. Um, and you could also argue about the rotating of them. Um, I know for a fact that I'll go through two sets of fronts to one set of rears if, if I just don't rotate them at all. Um, so you're better off just 
paying for two sets of fronts. I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I haven't sat down and done the figures. But um, yeah, I'm actually really happy with that. The, I can't see any sawtoofing whatsoever on these things. No, I, I can't see any sawtoofing whatsoever on the fronts of these things. So like the KM3, um, they're wearing very, very well. Um, how am I rating these compared to the, the KM3s? They're actually very, very similar. So let's get these back on the vehicle and pull the other two off. And no, I don't use a torque wrench on a four-wheel drive. Maybe on a sports car, not a four-wheel drive. A couple of ugger duggers is good enough. So these are all rotated now. As I said, I rotate diagonally across the vehicle and I don't bring the spare into it. It's just how I prefer to do things. And with Maxis are going through their range by the looks of it and the, uh, the versions that are used in mining, they're actually um, putting a, a couple of little more ribs here, which will make them a little bit um, a bit stronger for mining. Um, and I think they do have, oh yes, they've got mining written on the carcass. Um, these are made in Taiwan, so they're not a US made tire or anything like that. These flex really well. Uh, they're very, very comparable to KM3s off-road. I, I can't just tell any difference. The only difference I can tell with regards to these and the KM3s, uh, the KM, these are possibly ever so slightly uh, quieter on the road and the wet weather component. The wet weather component just freaks me out. Um, it, I, I'm used to, at a certain point, knowing where my vehicle will start squirming on a, a wet road and this is higher than what the KM3s are. Um, and as I said, when I first got them, it was, it was like, oh, it's gonna slide now, or um, there's a road near my place that has got multiple uh, roundabouts on it, and it's a downhill run on one side. And in the, a greasy, wet road, the KM3s would lock up and slide along. These don't. Um, I, can, I can make them slide, but in an emergency stop, these are a lot better on, in that section of road than the KM3s were, a, a lot better. Um, so yeah, really happy with these and I'd buy another set tomorrow if I needed to. I, I probably wouldn't even look at the KM3s. And that's my thoughts on the Maxxis Razor M2s versus the Berth Goodrich KM3s after approximately 15,000 kilometres. Will be interesting to see how they go after 30. Um, that's it for today guys, hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you next time, bye now.